Psalm 119, starting in verse 1. How blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. They also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. You have ordained your precepts that we should keep them diligently. Oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I shall keep your statutes. Do not forsake me utterly. So right at the beginning, um, I don't know if it's David or one of the other writers <clears throat> tells us that how blessed are those whose way is blameless or how happy are those whose way is blameless. Well, who's someone who's blameless? Someone who's blameless is somebody who, um, who has the Holy Spirit. That's a blameless person. There's no other way to be blameless. If they're walking in the law of the Lord, um, the second part of verse one, that's a lifestyle. That's a way of life. And again, verse two, how blessed or how happy are those who observe his testimonies. So um, brother Daryl talked about Joshua chapter one and, and um, the Lord told them to, to keep, keep the law um keep the law on his lips day and night. So if you're observing his testimonies, then it's going to be on your mind day and night. It's not something that you can uh, separate where it's like, okay, well, I have my, I have my little time here uh, with the Lord um, either on Sunday or, or uh, you know, for however long you do it each day. And then the rest of my life is separated. You can't separate it from your life. Verse three, they also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. So again, it's a, it's a lifestyle, a walk, walk, walking is a way of life, a practice. You have ordained your precepts that we should keep them diligently. Um, again, that's, those are the laws of God and we should keep them uh, diligently. And then um, the psalmist gets excited and says, oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes. So it's of major importance for him to keep the law of God. And then in verse six, then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. So how many times have we, have, I, have you looked at a, a, a scripture and been convicted by it? You know, you, you look in, in the Bible and you're convicted and you're, um, you're, you're caused to repent because of what you read. Verse seven, he talks about giving thanks. You need to mute that one. The phone. <clears throat> and then in verse eight, you see the humility. I shall keep your statutes. Do not forsake me utterly. I know Ponzi often says um, that the call to repentance is really um, it's grace. Um, that he he sees grace in it, and I and I do as well. Um, Ponzi reminds us that we that for those who are born again. Uh, we could have died in our sin, uh, but God didn't let that happen. So when he says, do not forsake me utterly, there might be some different translations out there, but I think that's the, the Psalm writer uh, just being thankful and humble. So. I like what you said, walking his ways, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and that's what, you know, it is. You have to live it day and night. It's not just going to church on Sunday or you know, Christmas, you know, Easter, it's a lifestyle. It's like exercising. If you want to get in shape, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's not just, okay, I'm going to be on this program for a month, you know, or, or eating right. It's a, it's a lifestyle. You have to live it. Right. Um, yeah, that's good. You know, we got to let the Lord work in us. We can't just sit there and expect that it's going to be done. <clears throat> Got to live it. It says, taste and see that the word is good. Yeah, Lauren, on uh, verse 8, New King James Version says, I will keep your statutes and, oh, do not forsake me utterly. But the NLT version says, I will obey your decree. Please don't give up on me. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, isn't that the cry of the believer, though? Uh, just the cry of humility. Yeah, don't give up on me. That's just it that, you know, we talk about, I know a lot of us, you know, 
you know, Lauren's making making it clear that we don't practice sin, but we do sin. And the cry of the believer is that our spirit and sin just don't get along. So whenever we do sin, there's conviction in our hearts. And we're just not, you're just not right. You know that you're not right. So you cry out to the Lord, don't give up on me. That's where John, you know, first John 1, 9 comes in, where we're confessing our sins continually to the Lord. It's a continual repentance to the Lord. Because think about what you did 20 years ago. Did you care if you looked at a woman lustfully? No. 20 years ago, you wouldn't care. You want to look at them. I was looking for it. <laughs> right. Today, if you happen to slip and fall, I mean, you're talking about conviction upon you. You know, someone just, you know, there's, there's grief in your spirit. And, and that's it right there. You know, that's, that's the Holy Spirit in your heart. You're just, you're grieving them, man. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I see, yeah, I see verse 9 is fear the Lord as well. Yeah. What were you going to say, Daryl? No, I was just going to, you know, just, when before, like you said, 20 years ago, you wouldn't do these things. I just would do the hope I wouldn't get caught. That was my biggest fear. There's no way I'd get caught. You know, now, even to think of doing such things is just, wow. I almost get convicted by thinking about it. Thank you.